He's a mechanical engineer with a master's degree in industrial engineering from Indian universities and an MBA degree from Australian University. He believes that there is no end for learning. Mr. Rajkumar has 29 years of automotive industry experience, which includes experience with engine manufacturers in India and Nissan Motor Company in the Middle East. For seven years, he has been at AW Rastamani Group, heading the after sales division, leading a workforce of 1,700 employees, dealing with six vehicle brands and five allied products through 16 networks across the UAE. The flagship company, Arabian Automobiles, has been awarded with Global After Sales Award for six consecutive years. and maintains top tier status in customer satisfaction in the UAE. It is regarded as the best and biggest in global Nissan. Mr. Raj Kumar is considered to be an authority in automotive after sales management. He's interested in writing, reading, and being an inspiring speaker. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I would like to call upon our chief guest, Mr. M.K. Raj Kumar, to inspire us all. Thank you very much for such a wonderful intro. Before getting into my speech, uh, we will do two exercises. One exercise for our body, other one for our mind. They say the best and simplest way to energize our body is clapping. Can we clap? Thank you. So now having energized our body, now it's important to energize our mind. The best way to energize our mind is laughing. Please laugh. OK. I think um, you're not laughing. <laughs> so very good, excellent. This is the first time uh, you must be seeing your professors also laughing, isn't it? <clears throat> when I look at uh, when I look at you students, young, smart, energetic, handsome, and beautiful students, I go back to my engineering college days. It was a story I would uh, uh, like to share with you. OK? Are you ready to listen to a story? Okay. I was in uh, mechanical engineering. There was a girl in our class. Only one. <laughs> Her name was uh, Jyoti. She was very good looking, believe me. I wanted to make a friendship with her. But as you know, we mechanical engineering students are very shy guys, basically, isn't it? So, I didn't know how to talk to her, and I didn't know how to approach her. I had a friend. I had a friend named Ismail. He was from electronics and communication. And always, you know, electronics and communication have, uh, that department has more girls in the class. So this guy, he was an expert in talking to the girls. So I asked him to help me. I asked him to teach me how to approach. Then he said, uh, OK, let's do step by step. I will teach you today lesson one. All that you have to do tomorrow when you see Jyoti is that say, hi, how are you? My name is Rajkumar. What's your name? I said, OK, let me practice. So whole night I was practicing. Hi, how are you? My name is Rajkumar. What's your name? Next day, I went to the class. There was a break time. We had one water cooler. 
next to our room, classroom. She was going to the water cooler. I followed her. I looked at her. She looked at me. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, hi. She said, yes. <laughs> I said, uh, how are you? She said, huh? As, as it is, I was a very shy guy, and with uh, this type of response, I was really rattled. Then I said, uh, I'm Rajkumar. What's your name, Jyoti? <laughs> <laughs> she, she looked at me, and uh, I, I don't know what she said. She said something and left from there. And I was very upset with my first speech. Then I came back to the hostel. I was very upset with myself that uh, I didn't deliver my speech properly. So, but more upset was Ismail. Ismail came running, fuming, saying that, what did you do in the college today? I said, I'm sorry, Ismail, you trained me well. I also practiced whole night, but I messed it up, I'm sorry. He said, what the hell? You went and spoke to my girlfriend, Jyoti. <laughs> that was the, my uh, end of my love story. Eh? <laughs> Good afternoon. Mechanical. Mechanical. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, professors, doctors, and boys and girls. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me and my colleagues from Arabian Automobile to this Technovanza 2014. I want to congratulate Manipal University for this initiative. It's an excellent initiative, and it's, it's amazing to see how you are inspiring our students to participate and do innovations. Excellent uh, initiative, I would say. I understand there were around 1,200 uh, students participated during these two days. Uh, I think all of you who participated, and it was, con it was conducted by students themselves. It's an amazing initiative. It's, uh, all of you deserve a huge round of applause. I think Technovanza provides a platform for innovation. And UAE, the country we are in, encourages innovation. You know, the leadership of this country is continuously innovating something new every day. And that's a big inspiration for us institutions as well as for the industry to see how we can do more innovations at our place. And I'd like to share with you the United Arab Emirates is ranked ninth country in the world for preferred for expatriates to live. It's amazing that we are living in a country which is in the top 10 uh, preferred nations in the world. There are three reasons for that they uh, stated in the survey. Number one is the salary and benefits or savings what you make in this country. Two is the quality of life you are able to lead in this country. And the third is the quality of education being provided in this country. And there is a big part by universities like Manipal University in upgrading and improving the level of education being provided in this country. Thank you very much, sirs, for your work here. And we come from industry, industry uh, like uh, automobile industry, Arabian automobiles. We would like to work with institutions like Manipal University. In fact, we are discussing, and uh, we will be very pleased to support uh, your university in setting up the automobile lab here. We will be very happy to take the automobile students, even mechanical students, for internships and even for placements in our organization in the years to come. So to talk about the future a little bit, by 2020, there are going to be 200,000 additional jobs going to be available in this country. 200,000 additional jobs are going to come up in the next six years. It's an amazing opportunity. There is a big opportunity available. Talking about our industry, automotive industry, I'd like to share briefly some statistics for your information. In 2013, as an industry put together all brands, we have sold 360,000 vehicles 
in the UAE. As of today, there are 2 million vehicles running on the roads of UAE. It's a huge vehicle population in a small country like United Arab Emirates. By 2020, in six years' time, this 2 million vehicles on the road is going to be 4 million vehicles on the road. So all these are suggesting and giving confidence to us that the potential is it's, uh, uh, you know, amazing. The opportunities are plenty. So it all depends upon how we are going to make use of these opportunities, you as uh, students, and you are the architect of the tomorrow's world. They say life is a race. You need to run faster to beat other person to be successful. But I don't endorse this view. Life is not a race. I consider life is like fishing in the ocean. There's a huge opportunity. You don't have to fight with others. You don't have to compete with your colleagues. You don't have to compete with your friends. You have to compete with yourself. You need to equip yourself with necessary skills and gadgets and gain knowledge to overcome the difficulties. And then you can be successful. In this journey towards success in our life, Will there be challenges or not? For sure, there will be challenges. There is nothing comes easy. If it comes easy, it is actually nothing. There was a Japanese gentleman named Akio Morita. This person developed a rice cooker. This rice cooker, instead of cooking rice, it was actually burning rice. He could not even sell more than 100 rice cookers when he started this. He didn't give up. He went on to do research. He went on to develop more businesses. And today, the electronic giant, Sony, was developed by Akio Morita-san. There was one colonel, retired colonel. At the age of 65, he started chasing his dreams. He developed a recipe. He went to 1,009 restaurants asking them to take this recipe. Rejected, dejected, no. He continued chasing his dreams. Finally, one restaurant accepted the recipe and today you know the food chain as KFC. I'm talking about Colonel Sanders. There was a, an employee was fired from his job. The editor-in-chief fired him saying that he lacked creativity. He didn't give up and he went on to establish the icon for creativity, Disney World. I'm talking about Walt Disney. At the age of four, a child did not know to speak. At the age of seven, he did not know to read. The school teachers said that this child will not be able to come up in the life. That same child became father of physics, that is Einstein. Thomas Edison made an attempt Thousandth attempt, he invented the bulb. So when he said that, someone asked, that means 999 times you failed? I mean, you failed? He said, no. 999 times I learned how to produce a bulb which doesn't work. So thousandth time, I was able to make the bulb which is working today. So all these people, they didn't give up when they faced with challenges. So we need to overcome the challenges to be successful. But how to overcome the challenges? How to turn the dreams into reality? How to make it happen? The first step is dream. First is to dream. The second step, second step, wake up. If you don't wake up from your dream, you cannot do anything. So second is to wake up. The third, you have to have clear goal and clear destination where you want to go. You cannot start a journey without having a clear destination in your mind. And next is to decide the direction. There are many ways to reach your destination. So you have to select the direction to reach your destination. Then challenges will come. We need to overcome the challenges and you have to be self-motivated. There will be no one coming and motivating you in the world. You have to be self-motivated. And you need to enjoy the journey. There's no point in chasing some dreams and success if you are not enjoying the journey. You will not be able to chase your dreams 
and your success if you don't enjoy the journey, even if it is a challenging one. And then finally, celebrate the small successes which you will make on the way to reach your dream, to reach your success. And with this determination and the passion I can see in your eyes and the way you have participated in uh, Technovanza, I'm sure you have the passion to succeed. And my best wishes to you to be successful in your life. Thank you very much. Can we hear a huge round of applause for that wonderful motivation? Thank you, sir.